welcome to Explore English Churches with Steve. Today we are in the village of Blonham in Bedfordshire and we've come to explore St Edmund's and St James Church. I think locally uh, this church is actually known as St Jimmy's. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a wander around and see what we find. Unusually, this church actually sits in the centre of the village. And as we've said before, um, most of the churches are on the outskirts of the village because that was due to the plague um, and everyone moved away from the churches. Anyway, back to St Edmund's and St James Church and we're going to call it St Jimmy's today, I think. As you can see, it has a wonderful tower to it. I believe it's sandstone. Now, again, uh, there would have been a church on this site in around about the 1100s. Now, I have visited this church before, but never had the chance to film it. And I want to take you down and show you this archway, which I found particularly interesting the last time I visited. I couldn't really find out anything about this archway at all. But it's rather sweet. Let's have a look. This, I presume, was the original entrance. Oops! Haha, <laughs> that's me falling down the steps again, people. Yes, there's a doorway here. I don't know. Oh, it is open. Yeah, no. Let's have a little walk through. Ah, yes. Look at this. Look at that. And we got this, uh, well, I, I presume this would have been the main entrance originally, because this looks pretty old. Let's see what else we can find in here, people. Yep, I'm going to watch the step this time. What I, excuse me, what I also know, let's have a look at this roof. What I also know is here, there's some graffiti on the walls and here we have uh, I think is that J S and L S and that dates back to 1788 uh, we have RS there also 1788 well I'm presuming that that's the original we also have some other symbols and graffiti there it's always interesting um, when you're looking for this stuff. I find it very, very interesting. I do like this doorway here uh, and the way it's done. You see that, that square. Let's have a look out the other side here. Oh, this made me laugh. Now, I'm not too sure what this stone here actually represents but they've put all of this stuff up here to stop the pigeons from sitting on there and crapping on it uh, obviously it's not working <laughs> let's have a little look outside here we got some very old outside tombs in memory of William Brown uh, that dates back to 1891. He passed away in July the 23rd, 1891. But let's have a look at this wonderful archway. I do love this archway. Yep, I do love it. It's, I've taken various photographs of it, but it is absolutely fantastic. And I do believe that, again, that, that is sandstone. It's fabulous. Let's have a wander around. We have an old tree trunk there, people. Uh, we have some more uh, tabletop tombs there. That one dates back to 1816. And someone here, and I don't know again what this is, but, uh, well, I do know what it is, but obviously it's a tomb, but I don't know who it's to uh, or who it's for. 
but if I can find any information inside the church, then I will try and remember to put it on the video. But look at this lovely door down here. Look at this beautiful door. Look how small it is. It's so tiny. You've got to duck your head to get in there, people. Let's take a wander down here. Now, I don't normally do this, but I, I find this church so fascinating. And look at this beautiful brickwork. It's kind of sand and iron. It's wonderful. I don't normally do this, but as I say, this is so fascinating. I've got to have a little look around. There's this massive window here. You can see it has obviously been repairs um, throughout the years, but that's hardly surprising. So let's take a wander back down towards the entrance again. Whoops, a daisy. <laughs> yeah, that's me. So we're going to take a wander through this wonderful archway and back up to the main entrance to the church and I do know that this is well it is, I, I've been come to this church as I said before um, a couple of times because but I've never been able to actually film it properly so let's take a wander around here this door here has obviously been changed at some point but look at that lovely archway look at that that's absolutely beautiful Just bear with me, it is quite a walk round. Yes. Look at this, and look at the moss on this porch. It's lovely, isn't it? How delicate is that? I know, sounds crazy, uh, but I find that one rather wonderful. And this chap, John Doan's church, um, I believe he was a famous poet or author. I'm sure we will find out more about him when we go inside. Let's pop in and take a look. Oh, ho, ho, ho. We love these big doors, don't we? This is quite a large church. There we go. And it's very warm in here. What we're going to do is just have a little look down uh, before we go truthfully exploring. Look at this. I, 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 yes, I remember coming here and seeing this wonderful stained glass window. It is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, very fascinating, this church. I really, really like it. It's very bright in here today. And let's take a wander down here and have a look. But as I say, I do like this church. Um, I don't know, as I've said before, some churches have a better feel about them than others and this one certainly has a very good feel this is a wonderful stained glass window truly beautiful let's uh, pop over and have a look at it without me falling over I hope it's absolutely gorgeous this isn't it let me see if I can get a better view how's that is that better I hope the window itself is huge. I'm going to try and zoom in. There we go. It is massive. It must be, I don't know, uh, what, 15, 20 feet in depth and probably about 8 feet across. 
but look at the detail in here and over here if you look at these sheep or rams if you like sheep look at the detail in those it's wonderful isn't it let's zoom out so you can get all of it it really is phenomenal this now that people is a gorgeous window I don't see any dates on it, unfortunately, but no, I do like that. Here we have a very small rodeo, and if we take a look back down the church, you will see just how large this church is. We have uh, cobalt up there, uh, holding up the roof. I'll see if I can zoom in. So you can have a look at those. Let's, let's see. That's better. And they are on all the roof trusses. That's come around. Whoops, it is easy. It's very difficult when you're trying to do this sometimes because you're looking up and trying to guide the camera at the same time. So I'm sorry about that. Oh, he looks rather sweet, doesn't he? We have a, here, we have a wonderful alabaster tabletop tomb. And it is in memory of Susan Longville. And if I zoom in here, you see the way they've spelled Susan? I think that's rather cute. Yeah, that's really nice. It's got some lovely decoration across the top. And have, let's have a little look at this young lady here. Whoops. <laughs> uh, there we go. And a little cherub. We do have over the other side it looks like there's one it looks like there was a alabaster uh, memorial or tomb in here and it's completely missing yes huh. it's gone there's an archway here that's been filled up as you can see that would have probably have held another window it is a wonderful little church this. Let's take a walk down. Yep, I'm watching the steps. This little curiosity here, I'll show you, is the guards uh, for the altar. Now, I've seen many types, but I've never seen any that slide in and out before. Yeah, it's quite sweet, that, isn't it? Hey, I've never seen ones that slide in and out. Oh, that's cool. We have a piscina here. And another memorial. And another wonderful stained glass window in the corner. I wonder if this behind this curtain is that tiny little door we saw outside. I think it is. Oh, yeah, there's the other side of it. Let's have a little peek. Yeah, look at that. Uh, it's not very tall, is it? It's not very big at all. Wow, it's a beautiful door. We have some poppy heads here. 
uh, but they're not ornately decorated as such. And also, I noticed some carvings here which are rather nice. And they are all different. They're rather nice. Let's have a look and see what else we can find. Oh, is that a unicorn? It is indeed. Look, look, look. And this one here, I'm not too sure. Uh, okay, I'm not sure what that is supposed to be. We have an archway here that uh, has now been taken up by this rather magnificent organ. Well, that is a big organ. <laughs> yep. And it looks in remarkable condition. We also have another little chapel here. Um, let's have a look through. It's a pity I... Well, I did make notes about this church before I left. Unfortunately, I've left them on the table. Let's have a look through here. And we've got some modern doors being put on. But yeah, this is really nice. Oh, look at this. Wow. Look at that. That's original. It's beautiful, isn't it? I know. I get so excited when I find a beautiful church. Let's take a wander around again. Look at this lovely stonework. Wow. Look at those massive arches. Exceptionally tall. We have quite a few hatchments up there. One, two, three, four, five that I can see from here. So let's take a walk down. Obviously this church was restored and added on, um, you know, around about the 14th century, I should believe. Oh, I look at this. This is rather cute. Oh, wow. That's really nice, isn't it? Look. Let's have a look. I don't know how it opens up. Oh, look at this. Again, I've never seen one like this before. Truly, truly remarkable. Yeah, I've got to go and have a look, haven't I? It's very rickety, so I've got to be careful. Very, very rickety. I'm, I think I shall come off of this. Oh, yeah. So I doubt very much about no, any very light people would be any good for that. But I've never seen one that opens up like that before. It's rather nice. Oh, beautiful flowers. What we have up here also, again, there would have been, as with many of the churches, there would have been a rude screen, I believe, across here, and that would have been the doorway to it. And it would have gone right across these arches here. There's many fascinating things in this church. Let's see what else we can find. Oh, look, we have another archway here that's been blocked up. That uh, looks fairly recently done. back down the church again and behind me we have I believe a list of rectors which I always like to see as you know ha -ha. and the very first one we have here is Thomas de Flanville instituted in 1200 mm. and then we have Walter Musk Musquette 
1232, Master Stephen Dill D. Halwell. I wonder if there's any relation to Jerry Halwell. Uh, he was in 1239. Let me zoom in so you can see these a little bit better. There we go. I always like to see these. It gives you, well, it brings, you know, basically the dates and the names to life, doesn't it? That's really good. And we've got Sir Thomas Bottler. And we have a few more here. Sir Robert Bronus, and he was also instituted. Sir Thomas Markham, Sir Henry Sleaford in 1503. I wonder why so many knights, you know, so many sirs. I do wonder about that. But yeah, I always like to see these. Again, these, I hit this here, does look like one of the original pews. And uh, I'm guessing that could have been one of the uh, medieval pews. And these also would have been the medieval pews. Very nice. No graffiti that I can see, so not on the pews. <laughs> now this is the tower, uh, the door to the tower. Uh, needless to say, it's got a massive great chain in it, which I can't say I blame them. And again, a uh, beautiful archway there. And there are the etchments up the top. Oh, we've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think there's eight etchments. Let's see if I can zoom in on these. As I say, very, very difficult people. And these again, uh, would have been the heraldic shields of the landowners and the gentry that actually owned all the land around here. And when they died, as I understand, these would have been displayed outside their house, or it would have been a manor house or what, and then brought to the church uh, when they were buried. Let's see if I can keep the camera on these. There's quite a few. This one here, I believe, always represents the king or queen of the country. Um, I believe. And that one, what it, who it relates to, I have no idea whatsoever. But some of these attachments are rather nice and again I've never seen so many in one church we have several memorial stones in the floor uh, Thomas Bramsall and Margaret Bramsall uh, this also this dates back to 1664 and 1668 we have another one here, Graham, Gray, Gray Longville. Now, did we see his name somewhere on the list of rectors? I'm not too sure. And I'm wondering, just, I don't know. It's a bit uh, warm, this one. I can't make out too much of that, unfortunately. And we have yet another one here. That's uh, another long view. And that dates back to 1680. Just here we have a wonderful display of poppies. Um, it's the memorial here uh, for people who gave their lives in both World Wars, 1914-1919 and 1939-1945 and that is absolutely splendid. It actually 
in this archway. This is the archway that covers up the back of the organ. So we're not able to venture in there and have a little wander around. Now what I've just spotted on here is this, I, I believe that's supposed to be St. George. That's rather nice. And again, we have the list of people who, in the 1914-1980 war, 18 war, sorry, uh, who gave their life for king and country. I wonder how many of those actually, there's four brothers there, can you believe it? But if I go in here, look, you've got Fred Hunt, Percy Hunt, George Hunt, Herbert Hunt, one, two, three, four, uh, and they all come from this small village. And so it's, yeah, it must have been absolutely terrible. But that was the First World War, where so many people just, well, just used as cannon fodder. Look at this wonderful church, how beautiful it is. I'll show you as much as I possibly can. Now, we have some information down here about this uh, poet chappy. And I'd be honest with you, uh, this John Doan. I've never even heard of him before. Um, and he was born in 1572, lived till 1631. Um, I just want to read this to you. John Dome was born in London in 1572 into a prosperous Roman Catholic family and was educated as a Jesuit school at a time when anti-Catholicism was rife. From the age of 11, he studied at the University of Oxford until being sent to study at Cambridge when he was only 14 years old. He was unable to obtain a degree from either college because, as a Catholic, he would not swear the oath of supremacy in recognition of Henry VIII as the supreme head of the church. Wow, I didn't know that. Unlike his relative, Sir Thomas More, he escaped execution for treason and went on to study law. Hmm, that's quite interesting. He was appointed secretary to Sir Thomas Edgerton, who later became Lord Chancellor in 1601 and MP for Brackley and sat upon uh, Elizabeth I's Parliament. Now, this chappy, uh, where did I see some information about him? He was considered a preeminent representative of the metaphysical poets. Now, if you know what a metaphysical poet is, then please put a comment down below because I have absolutely no idea. A poem to me is a poem. <laughs> we have a book here of his poems. board sits behind you and I can't read it. Ah, oh, it's the commandments, isn't it? What a shame, in a way, that they've had that covered up. Well, I do hope you've enjoyed this uh, tour of St. Edmund's and St. James Church, or Jimmy's as we shall call it, um, in the village of Blunham in Bedfordshire. 
please like, subscribe, it helps the channel grow. It also encourages me to pop out and do some more churches. Uh, so please do that. I do hope you've enjoyed it. I do know there's also lots more in this church, um, which I've missed, and I apologise for that. But maybe one day I'll come back with my notes <laughs> and actually get to point out even more. So please like, subscribe to the channel. Yep, I'm falling over again, people. And thank you very much for watching. Uh, please take care. Have a great day. If interested, I do have another channel. Uh, if you want to have a good old rant about life and all that's wrong with the country, then you can pop over to my other channel called Mr. Moan. <laughs> uh, you can find Mr. Moan on TikTok, uh, Instagram, um and youtube so if you want a good old moan pop over to mr moan